Hello, it's Waylon Chow, and this is Discharge and Remedies for Breach of Contract, Module 2C, Part B. In this part of this module, we will look at discharge by agreement, discharge by breach of condition, and discharge by frustration. Contractual obligations can be discharged by agreement, where the parties involved have mutually agreed to either change or cancel what they are obligated to do under the contract. So this can be done in a number of specific different ways. The parties may have agreed to put a termination clause in their contract that allows one or both parties to terminate the contract. The way the termination clause is written may include some conditions that may need to be satisfied in order to allow a party to terminate the contract. A simple example is stated here where the clause says either party may terminate the contract by providing written notice of at least 30 days. Another way to discharge by agreement is called novation. This is where the parties have agreed to cancel one contract and replace it with another contract. So novation can happen in one of two ways. One way is to have a brand new contract that has the same parties as, as originally, but the obligations in the contract are different from the original contract. Another type of novation is to have a new contract with the, the exact same obligations, but different parties, or at least one of the parties can be different. Discharge by agreement can occur in situations where one party has not performed what they're supposed to do under the contract while the other party has done what they have promised to do. Under accord and satisfaction, the performing party gives up the right to enforce the contract in exchange for some kind of new benefit being provided by the non-performing party. So under this kind of discharge by agreement, with an accord and satisfaction, there is an exchange of consideration. So this is a binding contract to discharge the non-performing party. Another type of discharge by agreement where one party has not performed what they're supposed to is called a release. This involves a performing party agreeing in writing under seal to release the non-performing party from its obligations. So this is similar to accord and satisfaction, but instead of having exchange of consideration, there is a seal. A seal is being used uh, in place of the exchange of consideration in order to have an enforceable agreement to release the non-performing party from their obligations under the agreement. The last type of discharge by agreement where where in situations where one party has not performed is called a waiver. This a waiver occurs where the performing party abandons its right to insist on contractual performance. Because there's no exchange of consideration here, a waiver may not be enforceable because it's, it is only a gratuitous promise with nothing given in, in return. Courts, however, have said that you know, in some situations, a, wa a waiver may be effective if the other party has detrimentally re relied on the waiver. Let's try to understand accord and satisfaction and release in the context of our scenario with Drew and Justin. So Justin has finished his performance at Drew's party. However, Drew's dad had recently lost much of his fortune on the stock market. Drew cannot pay Justin the $100,000 required by the contract. Justin feels sorry for Drew and wants to give up his right to receive his $100,000 fee. Justin agrees to give up his right to receive the $100,000 fee in exchange for Drew agreeing to become the president of Justin's fan club. So that's, that's an example of an accord and satisfaction. There is an accord in that uh, both the parties, Justin and Drew, are agreeing uh, to discharge the contract, and there is satisfaction being given by Drew in exchange for 
uh, Justin giving up the hundred thousand dollar fee. So what what Drew is agreeing to do is to become the president of his of his fan club. So there is an exchange of consideration. This the second uh, type of example is Justin agrees in writing in writing and under seal to give up his right to receive the hundred thousand dollar fee. So that's just simply uh, something in writing with the magic sticker, and that magic sticker solves the issue of of consideration. So that's called a release. The next type of discharge is a discharge by a breach of condition. So what this involves is you know, one party, the innocent party, being relieved of their obligations under the contract because the other party has committed a breach of contract. So there are, there are two, types of, two types of terms in a contract that may be breached. The first type is a condition and the second type is a warranty. A condition is, is one where if it is breached, it would substantially deprive the innocent party of an expected benefit of contract. Or more, or more simply put, a condition is a major term of the contract, an important term of the contract. A warranty is, in contrast, a minor or, or less important term of the contract where a breach of a warranty would not substantially deprive the innocent party of an expected benefit of the contract. If there is a breach of condition, the innocent party has an option to discharge the contract and claim damages. And, or the, the second option is to continue with the contract and, and sue for damages, claim damages. So there is that option to, dis, to be discharged from the contract. With a breach of warranty, however, the innocent party has no option. It must continue with the contract, but it may still make a claim and sue for, sue for damages. One thing to keep in mind is that a contract, or especially a contract that's professionally drafted, may contain a term or may contain a clause which specifies which terms of the contract are considered to be uh, conditions and which terms are considered to be warranty. So we in in that in that type of situation when the contract is drafted that way, we don't have to try to decide which is an important or major term versus what's a what's a minor term of the contract. Let's now try to understand the difference between a breach of warranty versus a breach of condition in the context of Drew and Justin. So we have two different breaches of contract. The first breach has involves the contract specifying that Justin must wear a blue cap, but instead when he's performing, he actually wears a cowboy hat. Is that a breach of warranty or a breach of condition? So that's very, very likely to be a breach of warranty. It's not it's not really a, a very important term of the contract. Uh, because he wears a cowboy hat instead of, instead of a blue cap, it doesn't de substantially deprive Drew, Drew of the essential benefits of, of the contract with Justin. The second breach, Justin performs at the party but sings only one song. The contract specifies that he performed 10 songs. So I would say that's clearly a breach, breach of condition. Performing 10 songs is, a, is an important term of the contract. It goes to the main benefit uh, of the contract that Drew would be receiving, which is hearing Justin sing, sing on stage, sing on stage precisely 10 songs. So only one out of 10 is nowhere, is nowhere near substantial performance. So that would be a breach of condition. You can be relieved of performing your obligations under a contract where something called frustration has occurred. A contract is frustrated when an event beyond both parties' control makes performance of that contract impossible or radically undermines its purpose. Neither party can have been responsible for the frustrating event, and that frustration cannot be self-induced by either of the parties. If we, if we take the example, the recent example of the COVID-19 pandemic, where we had you know, government required lockdowns, many contracts could be said to have been frustrated because of the lockdowns. So for example, if there was a contract to have uh, a company you know, cater a, a wedding uh, and the government lockdown 
prohibited any kind of uh, any kind of gatherings of groups, then you know, that makes it impossible for the catering company to perform its obligations under under the contract. It would be it would be illegal to have that kind of gathering uh, due to the the, the government the government imposed uh, lockdowns. So that that would be an example of frustration. There are other situations that ar- that arose from from the pandemic where performing a contract may have been made you know, just more uh, difficult or expensive, um, more expensive in that it, 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 was, it was difficult to, to get people uh, to get enough staff uh, to, get, to get work done, or there may have been just more obstacles in obtaining uh, things because of supply chain difficulties uh, that made it difficult and expensive to obtain uh, the supplies needed to perform a contract. In those kinds of situations where performance has just become more difficult or expensive, that is not considered to be frustration. Now, usually in most contracts or so written contracts, it, they will have a standard clause, standard boilerplate clause called a force majeure clause that specifically deals with uh, situations involving frustration, situations where uh, something beyond the control of the parties makes it impossible to perform the contract. And those force majeure clauses will will spell out you know, who bears the loss from, from that uh, frustration. If there is no force majeure clause to tell us who bears the loss or what are the obligations arising from the frustration, there is something. There is a piece of legislation in most provinces, including Ontario, called the Frustrated Contracts Act. The details of that act are set out in the textbook. Look at an example of a force majeure clause. So this is the Bell Mobility Terms of Service, which we looked at last week in our in our quiz. So in that. In that uh, terms of service, in that standard form contract, there is a section 52, which is the force majeure clause. They don't actually use that name, that that name here, probably because the the contract is is written in a plain English fashion, and, and a normal person would not know what force majeure means. But what what the contract says, and I've highlighted a part here, says that Bell will not be responsible for failing to meet obligations due to causes beyond its control, which is the definition of, of frustration. So they, it, it, the clause goes on further to give various examples of things that could happen beyond its control, like work stoppage, uh, a pandemic, war, terrorism, uh, civil in, insurrection, uh, a failure of the public uh, power grid. So it, it gives examples of things that could happen that could cause a disruption um, in, uh, in, in, in the cell phone network and cause Bell not be able to provide the services that it's obligated to do under the contract. Let's illustrate a simple example of frustration using Drew and Justin. Justin has been infected with a serious virus. On the morning of Drew's birthday, Justin has lost his voice and has to be hospitalized. So Justin is discharged from the contract by, by frustration. He's unable to perform he, uh, at, at the party. He can't sing because he's lost his voice. And it's, it's been caused by something that is beyond his control. That's what makes it frustration.